What's up everyone, Simulator Shane here. Today I wanted to show you some of the challenges of hooking the flight controls up to the sensors. So, there's the cyclic on the ground. It's rotated 90 degrees from as it is in the cockpit. So you can see that's the main control there. There's the handle and then that's sort of the cyclic base where all the pivoting happens. And then that's the linkage that goes back and then up to the rotor system back there. So obviously in a helicopter, everything, it's not going into a computer, so everything's going straight to the rotor system, to the swash plate. So all the pivoting that happens here is all just designed to link directly to the rotor system. Um, so it, it kind of makes it challenging to hook up to a computer because when you hook up to a simulator, you want all the axes to be um, completely separate and independent. So you want roll to only affect the roll sensor and then pitch to only affect the pitch sensor. So it kind of makes it challenging. So here it is in the cockpit. That's the cyclic base that I was talking about. That's what's attached to the bottom of the cyclic. And then the controls go back there and then up to the rotor system. So the way I'm planning to do the flight control sensing is with whole effect sensors. Um, from my testing, I found them to be much more stable and way more accurate than potentiometers. So basically it's just a little sensor like this that's wedged in there, clamped between the top piece and, and that bracket there and then that's going into the the board that that senses the electrical signal that comes out of the sensor and the way whole effect sensors work is they basically change their output voltage based on uh, what magnetic field is is currently affecting them so you can see there there's a, a magnet that silver thing is a magnet in there and that's attached to the cyclic and then attached uh, sorry to the cyclic base and then the actual cyclic there's a, a separate bracket that holds the sensor. So when you move the cyclic in pitch, you can see that the sensor rotates in the magnetic field of that magnet, and that sends a different output voltage. And the same thing for the roll here. As I roll, it moves the magnet, but not the bracket. And then for this one, the sensor is going to be mounted on here, and it's going to be sensing the rotation of that magnet. So you can see the challenge here with the cyclic is to isolate each axis separately. So the way I've done that is to have the sensor mounted to the actual aircraft chassis and then the magnet is on the thing that rotates only with roll. And then to separate roll and pitch, I have the magnet that's for the pitch sensor mounted on the thing that rolls. So that by nature cancels out the roll and then I have the sensor for the pitch mounted on the actual cyclic so that only changes when you move it in pitch so it's kind of like a three-step process and you've got to have brackets mounted on certain pieces to sense only certain motion now the extra challenge with the Robinson cyclic is that because it's changing the, the pitch on on rotor blades the way it does that is by mixing the input to the swash plate back there so you can see when I move pitch here the roll isn't being affected. But the trouble is when it's mounted in the in the cockpit, that Y harness there is mounted to the collective. And there's a slight difference in the distance there. So when the pitch control moves, it actually rotates and it moves this whole mechanism up and down, which affects the position of the magnet relative to the roll sensor. So I'm gonna have to figure out a way to make that bolt to the chassis instead of the collective so it's independent of the collective control. Now with the way the controls mix into the rotors, there's actually two issues that need to be solved to make it into a simulator. The first is that because this is bolted to the collective, when the collective goes up and down, it moves the whole assembly, which changes the roll. And the second is that there's a difference here, and this distance on the bell crank means that when the pitch control moves, it rotates around this point instead of this point, meaning when this comes forwards, this stays the same because it's bolted to a physical thing, and this will drop. And that means that when the pitch moves, the roll control is affected. So the way I'm going to solve these two issues is to, one, bolt the Y harness here to the actual aircraft chassis instead of the collective, so that when the collective goes up and down, it doesn't move this. And then probably I'm going to move this rotation point to this bolt here, so that when the pitch control moves, it moves the whole bell crank around this point instead of this point, and therefore the roll control will stay static. I hope you guys found that interesting, but now I've got to get back to work, so I'll see you later.